please join in the call to worship. Praise God who loves us all. Praise God who is full of mercy and compassion. Praise God who loves us fully and completely. Praise God who cares about justice and righteousness. Praise God who invites us to respond in love. Praise God who offers us healing, guidance, and fullness of life. Please rise as you are able and join in the opening hymn, When Morning Gilds the Skies. I am Pastor Robert McDowell, and welcome to our Athens First United Methodist Church worship service. A special welcome to not only those of you who have made your way here to be part of our in-person worship, but to those of you who are watching on our church's YouTube channel, also a special welcome to all of you. Our theme for today is Compassionate Humanity, and may God bless you as we continue in our worship together. Please join in the prayer of confession and words of assurance. O oh God, we are in need of your healing presence. Life can be difficult and we struggle with emotional, physical, relational, and spiritual pain. We confess that we often forget to turn to you for comfort and guidance. We rely on our own strength and we grow weary. Thank you for sending us Jesus who walks alongside us and offers us wholeness and fullness of life. We are grateful for his presence in each and every moment. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Now, Mike Bela will have our church toys message. Steal yourselves.
hey guys, you know what that noise means? It means it's Noisy Bucket Sunday. And Noisy Bucket Sunday is the day that we um, in, the, in our church uh, support the first or the uh, Athens County Food Pantry. And I just want to remind everybody that um, our church is represented on the board for the food pantry by myself and Jean Marie Kakowski. Now, toys. Because I have to read my comments, I'm going to go up here so I can take my mask off because I have to put my glasses on and they get frosted. One more thing about Noisy Bucket. Yeah, of course, we've got a bucket in the back and you're welcome to deposit noisy or folding money there. But anybody who needs to or would like to, you can also mail in a check to the church and uh, just on the note, make it out to the food pantry on the note. Now, uh, Pastor Robert is going to talk about compassionate humanity. And today, toys and the children that you represent, it's frosting up. Compassionate humanity sometimes means going out of your way to help someone. And the food pantry has been helping folks for a long time, but has recently found a new way to do that. Here's a couple examples of everyday compassionate humanity, people going out of their way to help someone. For example, you, we have all seen, back in the days when this church had uh, uh, full pews before the coronavirus, um, during the communion, of course, everybody would come up to get their communion, the, the bread and the, and the grape juice. But there was always a few people who couldn't come up and because they couldn't make it up to the front of the church, Pastor Robert would go to them and would take them the bread, would take to them the great juice, and that was an example of compassionate humanity. I had my own recent example, uh, and about a month ago I had back surgery, and we had a big snowstorm, and um, I did not know it was going to happen, but some friends came to my house, and um, Kristen and I were able to watch friends of ours shovel our driveway. That was compassionate humanity. The Athens County Food Pantry that we've been talking about is already well known for helping people who have, do not have enough to eat. But there are some people who cannot make it to the food pantry location to pick up much needed food. To help these folks, the pantry just started a new on the road program to deliver food to struggling families by going into communities with scheduled mobile van deliveries. When choosing locations, the pantry board looked at areas where there aren't many other options nearby. The locations they will be visiting include Alexander Local Schools in Albany, Trimble Elementary in Jackson, Shade Community Center in Shade, Federal Valley Resource Center in Stewart, Amesville Elementary School, and the Waterloo Community Center in New Marshfield. The pantry will do two Saturday deliveries each month, visiting each community several times throughout 2021. The On the Road program, in, a, in addition to serving, is in addition to serving clients five days a week from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. at uh, the Athens County and Job and Family Services location on State Route 13. Please pray with me. Lord, help us think of ways we can help those around us, even if we have to go out of our way to do it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our Old Testament reading is from Deuteronomy chapter 18. As the people of Israel prepare to enter the promised land, Moses instructs them. At Sinai, their leaders have found direct contact with God to be beyond them, so God has appointed Moses as his emissary. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people. You shall heed such a prophet. This is what you requested of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, If I hear the voice of the Lord my God any more, or ever again see this great fire, I will die. Then the Lord replied to me, 
They are right in what they have said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their own people. I will put my words in the mouth of the prophet who shall speak to them everything that I command. Anyone who does not heed the words that the prophet shall speak in my name, I myself will hold accountable. But any prophet who speaks in the name of other gods or who presumes to speak in my name a word that I have not commanded that prophet to speak, that prophet shall die. Please stand as you are able for our gospel reading. In Mark chapter 1, we are told how Jesus offered compassion by healing a man who was troubled by an unclean spirit. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Just then, there was in the synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed, and they kept on asking one another, What is this? A new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Thank you. 
Thank you, Kevin. I often wonder if Kevin could teach me how to do that. And I think what Kevin would say is, practice. We need to practice. And I hear you practicing at the church so much, Kevin, so thank you for your gift of music for us today. Let us pray. Oh, gracious God, teach us what it means to be a people of compassionate humanity. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. It is amazing how much you can learn about a person from one incident, but that's what we get from our gospel reading this morning. Mark gives us this story of when Jesus healed a man who had an unclean spirit. At first glance, we might be tempted to just say, oh, this is just another story of where Jesus healed someone and just leave it at that and move on. Notice how flippant I am with that initial impulse of just moving on from this story. And I think this just goes to show how accustomed I am to reading about Jesus healing people. But then I start thinking about it. That healing changed this man's life, as all healing can do, whether it be physical, mental, emotional, relational, or spiritual healing. This story reminds me of just how many people Jesus impacted during his ministry. So think about all of the healings, all of the miracles, all of Jesus' teachings, and all of the people who experienced new life and wholeness because of him. And I think it's creative the way that Mark describes this particular healing story in helping us to see all of who Jesus is. So let's look at this healing story a little more closely to appreciate all of these dimensions of Jesus. Let's start with how Mark begins this healing story with Jesus teaching in the synagogue. That little detail reminds us that Jesus impacted people through his teachings as a rabbi, as a Jewish rabbi. This was not an isolated case of Jesus teaching in the synagogue. He was known to be a very powerful and prophetic teacher impacting the lives of many. Mark even tells us that the people in the synagogue were astounded. He uses that word, astounded at his teaching. And then, of course, Jesus showed that he was a compassionate healer as he healed this man who had been suffering with an unclean spirit. We're not sure what this unclean spirit really was. Was the phrase unclean spirit the biblical world's way of describing what we think of today as a mental health issue? Was it more of a physical condition? Or was it primarily about a spiritual torment that he was experiencing, as this story indicates? Well, whatever it was, this man was in need of healing, and because of Jesus, he was healed, he was made whole. This one small story shows us that Jesus was a teacher, Jesus was a healer, and Jesus was the Son of God. Notice that when the man was brought to Jesus to be healed, the unclean spirit cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are. You're the Holy One of God. And in telling us this story... Mark wants us to see not only who Jesus is as a teacher and as a healer, but also as the very Holy One of God. And because of who Jesus is, he impacted many people through his healings, through his teachings, and through his identity as God's Son. And so in all of these ways, Jesus as the Son of God demonstrated throughout his ministry what it means to be a walking presence of compassionate humanity, a walking presence 
of compassionate humanity. I wonder if this story and so many of the other gospel stories about Jesus are to help us see not only who Jesus is, but who we are called to be. Like Jesus, we are called to offer God's healing love with compassionate humanity. This past September, I received the sad news that a good friend of mine, a high school classmate, died suddenly of a heart attack in his home. Craig was not only a dear friend, he was also a distant relative. Growing up, we spent many of our summer days in South Central Pennsylvania at each other's house playing baseball. We also played sports together in high school and we're in a lot of the same classes. Penny and I moved from Pennsylvania to Ohio in 1985 and a few months after we arrived, Craig was traveling through the state and we ended up spending a couple of days together. And that was the last time I spoke with Craig. I heard through another classmate over the years that Craig became a doctor and he moved to Texas. But that's all I really knew about him. He wasn't on Facebook, so I wasn't able to keep up with him that way. When Craig died suddenly this past September, that's when I was blown away by Craig's remarkable career. Little did I know that this childhood friend brought healing and compassion to so many people through his career as a doctor. He was a brigadier general in the Air Force, and he was a recognized leader in emergency medicine. He was the medical director for the National Association of Emergency Medical Technicians and an associate professor in the Department of Emergency Health Sciences at the University of Texas Health Science Center in San Antonio. His deployments included Operation Enduring Freedom in Afghanistan, and he led evacuations from the New Orleans Convention Center during Hurricane Katrina, as well as leading multi-state massive medical responses to Hurricane Harvey. And so I'm reading all of this, and I'm thinking, wow, Craig, way to go. But what caught my eye was what the family included at the end of his very extensive obituary. And it has a direct connection with our gospel reading for today. His obituary concludes with these words. His compassionate humanity and humble leadership are already missed. Friends and family will always remember his consistent question that he asked everyone that he encountered. What can I do for you? What a wonderful way to be remembered as someone who is known for his compassionate humanity. Someone who is known to ask people, what can I do for you? But we don't have to be a brigadier general or a well-known emergency doctor in order to live out Jesus' healing ministry. We just need to be open to the opportunities, great and small, where we can be a blessing to others. Sometimes these opportunities have a domino effect, like this past fall when we were collecting food and hygiene products for the international students here on campus, and you were so generous in helping out with that mission opportunity. It was during that collection when Goodwill Activities and Training Center donated food to our Monday lunch ministry. And because we already had a large stockpile of food when we received those donations, Tom Murray, our Monday lunch coordinator, decided that 
their food donations to our church would be better served by giving it to the international students. And the people at Goodwill agreed, and so our church was able, able to give even more thanks to the timing of these donations. And I just love this picture of the people from Goodwill and Tom Murray showing some of the food items that we were able to jointly give to the students here on campus. Even though you can see they're all wearing masks in the photo, you can tell that they're smiling. You can tell. And so what a wonderful way of that domino effect of one good thing leading to another good thing. Compassionate humanity is contagious. Our Stephen ministers have been active either by calling on people in our congregation to see how they're doing or by meeting with people over the phone and offering a listening ear, giving the latest news of the church and offering spiritual encouragement. And so when we think of the healing ministry of Jesus, our Stephen ministry banner that we have here in our sanctuary really says it all. Notice the Stephen ministry statement. It says, Christ caring for people through people. Christ caring for people through people. This ministry, which provides one-to-one -one peer support, has blessed many people over the years. And I'm so thankful that we have this here in our church. So here are some comments from people who have been on the receiving end of Stephen ministry. A young woman describes how her caring relationship with her Stephen minister allowed her to experience Jesus in a more tangible and life-transforming way. She says, I began to feel God's love again. Another person tells how having a Stephen minister during a family crisis provided a spiritual anchor and the opportunity to focus on her own needs. When describing Stephen ministry to others, this person says how it provides a steady reminder of God's presence. A man says how grateful he is for Stephen ministry and how it built a highly trusting relationship apart from his regular circle of friends so that he could move forward through a very tough time in his life. Stephen ministry is one example of how the church offers God's healing presence. So let us know if you would like to know more about Stephen ministry. This healing story of Jesus from our gospel reading today reminds me to be open to the opportunities that are all around us to offer God's healing love to others. Here's a, a short prayer that I discovered, I think it was about a year ago, that has reminded me to be more open to these opportunities. It's a short prayer. It's also a rhyming prayer that I think you might find very helpful. Dear Lord Jesus, Help me to do the things I should, to be to others kind and good, and in all I do or say, grow more loving every day. And I invite us to pray that from our hearts silently here or out loud if you're in your homes. Let's pray that prayer together. Dear Lord Jesus, help me to do the things I should, to be to others kind and good, and in all I do or say, grow more loving every day. And like my friend Craig, may we be known to ask this question to the people we encounter. What can I do for you? Let's sing our prayer hymn. Jesus. 
Compassionate and loving God, thank you for sending Jesus, whose kind hands brought healing to people that he encountered. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate meals with those who felt excluded and not worthy of your love. Thank you for the kind hands of Jesus. Take our hands and make them kind, O God. Take our hands that we may share your gifts with those around us. Take our hands so that we may be a blessing to others. Thank you for the hands that prepare our Monday curbside lunches for people in our community. Thank you for the hands that clasp together to pray over our weekly list of prayer requests. Thank you for the hands that pick up the phone to call another church member just to say, I'm thinking about you. Thank you for the hands that prepare worship slides and set up microphones for our Sunday services. Thank you for hands that play the piano and ring the bells so beautifully. Thank you for the many hands that help our church to offer compassionate humanity to our community and world. As I remember my high school classmate who devoted his whole life to saving the lives of others, I'm thinking of those words he was known to say to the people he greeted. What can I do for you? Help us to remember this simple but powerful question that we can ask of the people we encounter. And if we feel inadequate to address the needs that people may have, may we at least be able to point them to other resources that might be of help to them. And may we also point them to you, the one who offers us healing, compassion, and eternal life. On this Sunday that we focus on the healing ministry of Jesus, we especially lift up doctors, nurses, first responders, and for the COVID-19 vaccine, to become more readily available for as many people as possible. And we thank you for our Stephen ministers here at Athens First, who offer one-to-one -one peer support for those in need of a listening ear in a very confidential way. Thank you for this ministry in our church that has been and continues to be a blessing for many people. And so whether you're here in this sanctuary or watching on our church's YouTube channel, I invite us now to put our hands together and may God use these kind hands to be a blessing to others even as we pray the prayer Jesus taught us to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let's continue with our prayer hymn. 
I want to thank you again for joining us for worship, whether in person or by watching on our church's YouTube channel. We're so thankful that you are with us today. And I'm also grateful for all of those who are helping with our worship service. We wouldn't be able to do this without those servants. So thank you uh, to all who have helped. Um, join us for worship next Sunday as we learn from the Apostle Paul what it means to have a joyful calling in living out our faith, and that'll be next Sunday. Every Wednesday, we post a midweek Holy Hump Day video that offers some spiritual thoughts as well as some church news. This five to 10 minute video is posted on our church's social media as well as on my Nikos web blog, so it can be viewed at a time of your choosing every Wednesday. I do want you to know that for this past week's Holy Hump Day, update I shared about our church's leadership board, their purpose and their responsibilities. And so here are the names along with their roles on our leadership board. Our board is divided into four sub teams, which include our finance team, our staff parish team, our trustees team and our nominations team. And these teams meet in between our leadership board meetings. And the minutes of each leadership board meeting are sent out to the congregation through our Friday email connections newsletter, which you can subscribe to if you're not already receiving that. That is on our church's website at the bottom. You can subscribe to our connections newsletter. We did have our first leadership board meeting of the year this past Thursday, and I'm so thankful for this wonderful team that serves on our behalf. They are an example of how our church is blessed with so many dedicated uh, volunteers. As we heard from today's Church Toys message from Mike, today is Noisy Bucket Sunday, and we are invited to offer an additional gift this week that will be sent to the Athens County Food Pantry. And as Mike had mentioned, checks can be made payable to the church with Noisy Bucket on the memo, and um, you can also go online and there is a specific um, giving uh, link that you can offer a gift to Noisy Bucket and the Athens County Food Pantry through that. I do want you to know that there is a large bucket in the back of our sanctuary this morning that someone brought in that is so heavy, uh, has so many coins in it, so please pray for the coin counters this week because they're gonna have their hands full uh, but all of that is going to go to the food pantry, and that's such a good thing. So thank you for all of the other gifts, whether online or by check. Our next Noisy Buck offering, if you're wondering, when is the next fifth Sunday? In May. So you can store up your coins or other resources so that you can give the fifth Sunday in the month of May. Thank you for your weekly offerings that are helping our church to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of our community and world, and for us to be a healing presence of offering compassionate humanity in our community. Praise God, from whom all blessings flow. Let's stand as you're able, and we're going to offer our doxology of praise.
Dear Heavenly Father, we give to you as a response to your goodness to us. We ask that you receive our offerings and continue to supply our needs. May your peace be in our hearts, your grace be in our words, your love be in our hands, and your joy be in our souls. In your name we pray with compassion to others. Amen. Please join in the closing hymn, Rejoice Ye Pure in Heart. Please be seated, and I invite you to remain seated um, through the benediction. Following the benediction, our greeters will be dismissing us by pews to help with social distancing as we exit the building. Thank you for taking all of the precautions that make this in-person service uh, possible. I invite us from our hearts here in the sanctuary or out loud uh, on the church's YouTube channel, if you're there in your homes, to uh, share in our closing benediction. You are a blessed, beloved, and beautiful child of God. There are no exceptions, asterisks, or loopholes. As we leave from this place today, may we continue to bear witness to the love of God in this world with compassionate humanity so that those to whom love is a stranger will find in all of us generous friends. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.